Hey, this is Mike Johnston, Certified Pharmacy Technician, Founder and CEO of the National Pharmacy Technician Association, and you're listening to the Pharmacy Technician Podcast. This is the Pharmacy Technician Podcast, a podcast publication partnership between the National Pharmacy Technician Association and the Pharmacy Podcast Network. This podcast is dedicated to all the pharmacy technicians who assist our pharmacists, help manage the daily operations in thousands of pharmacies, and deliver vital pharmacy healthcare services to our patients. The National Pharmacy Technician Association, the NPTA, is the world's largest professional organization established specifically for pharmacy technicians. The association is dedicated to advancing the value of pharmacy technicians and the vital roles they play in pharmaceutical care. And now, we bring you a podcast dedicated to our pharmacy technicians, hosted by a dedicated, passionate, and experienced pharmacy technician and national healthcare leader, Mike Johnston, Chairman of the NPTA and your host of the Pharmacy Technicians Podcast. Welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast Network's launch of the Pharmacy Technician Podcast. I tell you what, I have wanted to launch this podcast for nearly three years. It's taken me quite some time, much longer than I'd like to admit to actually get this together I could not have found a better host to lead the new Pharmacy Technician Podcast than this gentleman who's on with me today. I'm actually getting chills because of this opportunity to work with Mr. Mike Johnson. Welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast Network, Mike. I am so excited to have you here. Hey, Todd. How are you? I'm doing great. i watched you. I followed your Facebook. You have one of the largest gatherings of pharmacy professionals in the world on your Facebook that's dedicated to pharmacy technicians through the NPTA's presence. You are a champion of pharmacy technicians and how critically important they are to the function of different facets of pharmacy work, whether that be hospital system or community or long-term care or specialty. But Mike, you and I have talked so many times in the past, Um, the audience hasn't had an opportunity, our listeners haven't had an opportunity to really hear those discussions. So what I'd like to do is have you uh, just share with our listeners, who is Mike Johnston? What is the NPTA, the National Pharmacy Technicians Association? Just give us some background to set the stage of who our new host is of the upcoming Pharmacy Technician Podcast. Certainly. And uh, first, let me just start off by thanking you for the opportunity to join the Pharmacy Podcast Network and uh, launch this brand new channel for the pharmacy technicians exclusively for them. I think it's going to be a tremendous success, something that's really needed out there for pharmacy technicians. And uh, I could not be more excited about this new opportunity. So regarding a little bit of background on myself, uh, I, my background is I'm a certified pharmacy technician based uh, out of Houston, Texas. And back in, way back in 1999, I set out on the journey of setting up a national association to represent and provide a voice for pharmacy technicians. Quite simply, there was, there was no voice for us, and there was lots of changes coming down the pike with certification and registration, uh, and there was this growing sense of frustration in not having a voice and being a part of the process. So, to be perfectly honest, I had no idea what it would take um, or what that journey would include in setting up a national organization, uh, but I learned quickly and uh, on the process. So we started back in 1999 with three members in a little hotel room uh, up on the northwest side of Houston, Texas. Fast forward today, we have roughly 100,000 members all across the U.S. Wow. uh, And international as well. So, yeah, it's been quite the journey for sure. So I know being in so many different pharmacy settings – Um, My background started in institutional pharmacy. The pharmacy technician in long-term care pharmacy is critical to the operation, critical to workflow, 
Um, there's different types of pharmacy technician roles within each of those um, facets of workflow, um, checking and inventory management and, um, you know, contacts with the patient and, and being that filter between the patient and pharmacist. And then I got into the community pharmacy side through technology and specialty pharmacy and hospital system pharmacy. And the technician is always there. And something that I always, always, every time. And something Mike that opened my eyes and made me want to build a podcast channel just for pharmacy technicians is the fact that the pharmacy podcast starts back in 2009 and I, I flubbed along and I think my brother and my mother were my only listeners probably for a while. And then it just blew up and it became this network and similar to not of course at this, at the, at the huge level that you guys are at, but the pharmacy podcast network was the coupling and the gathering together of podcasters that were pharmacy professionals in order to deliver great information while we're in our commute or in our cars, in our way to work, or we're working out or we're jogging or being able to consume information from an auto audible perspective. And, and the pharmacy technician is going to continue to evolve. Uh, there's going to be new certifications I think that are going to be coming out. And it excites me that you get to lead this because you really have your finger on the pulse on the pharmacy technician and what that, role means to our uh, patients, what it means to our healthcare system, what it means to driving costs down. There are 300,000 registered active pharmacists in the United States, for example, not even the whole world, just the United States. I can only imagine how many pharmacy technicians there are in comparison to that 300,000. Mike, can you give us some insights into that? Certainly. Um, you know, one of the ways to consider pharmacy technicians in the pharmacy practice setting uh, that I like to use is they're typically the first and the last person in the pharmacy that's going to interact with the patient. So this serves as really a backbone in the entire industry. And thankfully, now through the association at NPTA and uh, numerous other opportunities, technicians do have a voice. We're involved in the process we have a seat at the table, and uh, the distinction, the growth of where this industry has gone from, you know, back in 1999 to today in 2018 um, has been tremendous. But pharmacy technicians do work in virtually every practice setting, um, and it goes way beyond just community and health system pharmacy settings. You've got um, – just literally too many to, to list at this point. But on average, there are, you know, two, three, maybe as many as four pharmacy technicians practicing for every pharmacist. Uh, varies by state law, but that's kind of a general consensus. So um, the number of individuals out there working as pharmacy technicians, helping patients on a daily basis is phenomenal when you stop and think about it. So uh, just some easy calculations. It's almost like a million to 300,000. It's almost like three to one or 3.5 to one of every pharmacist that's out there. You know, there are pharmacists out there that I've had conversations with extremely passionate about the profession. And then there's pharmacists out there who are frustrated with their profession they're frustrated with their life as a pharmacist, um, shame on them. Um, if you want to get more out of your profession, then you've got to do more. Um, I work a full-time uh, job as director of strategy for an addiction recovery organization, national organization, fighting the opioid epidemic. And that's a 40, 50, 60, sometimes hour a week job, traveling two, three days a week, uh, two, three... <laughs> Yeah, two to three weeks per month. And then the Pharmacy Podcast Network is a, I'm dedicating that time as a side hustle to building this audio blog and this audio network for the pharmacy profession. So when I hear pharmacists complaining and never doing anything to change things, then like I said, shame on you. I don't, I don't want to hear your complaints unless you're doing something to change it. 
Same goes for pharmacy technicians. There are pharmacy technicians out there who have valued the profession enough to do things outside the box, not part of the norm, dynamic individuals that I've met up with, passionate people who actually get me verklempt and, and, and you know, bring tears to my eyes with the stories I hear of how they've touched patients' lives. And then you put on top of that the education that has come through the healthcare system. I want you to talk to us about the certified pharmacy technician and how that is rising up and raising up the best of the best, the cream of the crop pharmacy technicians out there. Certainly. And, you know, uh, when it comes down to it, apathy is one of my biggest pet peeves. And we see it uh, in this field, just like every other industry and every other profession. And, you know, my message to those folks is to always remember, you're going to get out of your career what you put into it. And, uh, you know, there's some that just put in the very bare minimum. And guess what? That's what they're going to take out of it. Regarding pharmacy technicians, as a baseline, uh, we feel that pharmacy technicians should be nationally certified. National certification has been around since 1997. It was introduced by the Pharmacy Technician Certification Board, PTCB. Um, today, there's actually two national organizations that are offering baseline certifications for pharmacy technicians. You have PTCB. You also have NHA, the National Health Career Association. Uh, and there's pros and cons with both of those programs, but by and large, uh, nearly every state recognizes both organizations as a provider of certification services for pharmacy technicians. And one of the things that we do at NPTA is, is advocacy, um, not only with uh, political uh, representatives at the state government level, but also with the state boards of pharmacy. Um, I think our listeners would be uh, befuddled by the um, just sheer lack of knowledge and information when it comes to the roles of pharmacy technicians versus the requirements in many states. You've got certain states that literally have no requirements for a pharmacy technician to practice. There's more requirements for someone to cut someone's hair or do someone's nails than someone that's going to be making chemotherapy for a patient administered intravenously. It's, it's absolutely insane. So we get in there, we work with these politicians, these different leaders, uh, work to educate them. And one of our goals is to require registration with the State Board of Pharmacy so that way there's a, a network of accountability. Some states have no records. They don't even know who's working as technicians in their states. So if there's issues, there's no way to uh, control that situation. It's uh, unbelievable to me. Uh, but then step two would be uh, national certification. That provides a competency-based exam to at least provide a baseline so that pharmacists and patients know that the individuals that are working on their medications and their prescriptions at least have a baseline knowledge and information about those services. So what do you see happening to the pharmacy technicians education track in their career? Do you, is, do you think there's new segments that will come out that will give insights to a technician, a certified technician that can dig deeper into assisting the pharmacist in things like pharmacogenomics, addiction recovery, um, long-term care, senior care, um, research pharmacy? I'm just wondering, if you, do you foresee tracks coming out or maybe even are there tracks coming out that we don't know about? There are. I, I think it's going to be a little while still before we get that specific um, in some of the areas of focus that you just mentioned. But one thing that I would want our listeners to understand is up until this point for the last 20 years, there's been kind of a, a generalist approach to pharmacy technicians and their education, training, and certification. Um, kind of this one-size-fits-all approach. And trust me, that when you, especially when you bring up education and training, that is a major, major hot button issue. Uh, right now, most states do not require specific accredited formal 
education and training. Most of it's done through all the job training, but I, I think we're going to see some significant changes to that over the next few years. But the other thing that's really emerging is this idea of specialties. So I think we're going to continue to have this generalist option out there, this uh, national certification, baseline certification, the CPHT exam. But I think the industry, we've, you know, there's been numerous events and meetings and um, kind of strategic sessions uh, that I've been a part of. And I think where we're headed is kind of at least initially a split into specialties for the community-based pharmacy technician and a specialty for the health system or hospital-based pharmacy technician. You've got uh, everything from employers to pharmacists to other stakeholders wondering um, for the individuals that are going to be working in hospitals and health systems, we want to make sure that there's the baseline of knowledge and education for them is slightly different than those that are working in community care. You've got issues like insurance reimbursements, inventory management that may be, well, not so much inventory management, but, um, you know, customer service and uh, those types of things that are going to be more specific in a retail setting, community-based setting. Uh, and then you've got the intricacies of sterile products um, and compounding and things that go into the practices in the health system pharmacy. So, I think in the very near future, we're going to start to see a split and have some more specialized certifications for those two options. Mike, something I've witnessed being out in the field with independent pharmacies, uh, pharmacies that are owned um, outside of the national chains, and some of these are 10, 20, 30 pharmacy uh, you know, organizations and in places and uh, really big organizations that are privately owned, they have, and, and then also specialty, by the way, they have expected inside that organization that the, that the tenacious, uh, dr- career-driven pharmacy technician that really wants to rise up is given very meticulous and very detailed responsibilities in their own workforce, in their own workflow, in their own processes. So back to your comment about inventory, I actually remember going into a specialty pharmacy where a certified pharmacy technician did nothing but work on inventory. Like that was it. That's all they did. They had to understand how to properly place the certain medications in a certain area because of the disease state and the couplings of different vitamins and nutraceuticals and all this other stuff. And, and I remember he was very meticulous, extremely detailed-oriented, had to understand the pharmacy management system inside and out, the inventory management system inside and out, as well as some uh, third-party uh, inventory management tools. So there's an example of how many branches could sprout out of the base tree line. They start at the base of the tree, the trunk of the tree, where you have your certified pharmacy technician. But as you grow in your career, you could sprout in so many different directions as a pharmacy technician. That's why I'm so excited about launching the Pharmacy Technician Podcast with you, Mike. Share with our listeners, what do, you, what do we want to deliver to our pharmacy technician out there through this podcast? Well, you know, for me, it really goes back to that original drive and vision of setting up the National Pharmacy Technician Association to to give technicians access and a voice and a seat at the table. So my goal with this podcast is really intertwined with uh, some of the core values of the association. We want to help technicians reach and realize their full potential, uh, both professionally and personally. And part of that is just going to be keeping technicians up to date, kind of pulling the curtain back, if you will, and letting them know what's going on behind the scenes, getting them involved, getting their insights and feedback. I'm looking forward to interviewing technicians with a wide variety of backgrounds and and experience on this program so we can 
explore the different mindsets and perspectives and uh, just continue a dialogue both uh, through the podcast and then continue that dialogue online through social media and really just connect these individuals. I think it's going to be an incredibly powerful platform. I couldn't agree more. Obviously, I'm biased, but excited that you're here leading this, uh, Mike. <laughs> hey, for people out there that are in tune to social media, Mike has done a phenomenal job with social media. Mike, you actually, we, I follow you at RX Mike, and it's such an easy name to remember. I remember there's so many that I try to tag when I'm, you know, um, shame on me uh, when I'm probably texting when I shouldn't be. But sometimes I find myself trying to find somebody's name and your name is one of the easiest ones to remember, RX Mike. And so anyone that's out there that wants to reach out to Mike, give our listeners a, a, a way, the pharmacy technicians that are listening to the show, a way to reach out to you, start submitting ideas, start submitting comments to you, start getting involved, uh, things that have already been developed stuff that you already have out there in order to connect pharmacy technician with other pharmacy technicians. And then obviously you, I always say I'm pharmacist's biggest fan. I, I think I should change that word to pharmacy biggest fan, but I think Mike Johnston, I think you're a pharmacy technician's biggest fan. I certainly hope so. Um, and listen, it's real easy to follow me on social media, interact. Um, like you said, my, my handle is RxMike. I use that kind of as my personal branding on social media. So whether you're on Facebook or you're on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, um, I'm really active on all of the different platforms and also my content, my information, my posts vary. So you're not going to see the same thing four different times on all the different platforms. Uh, so whether it's a forward slash or a at symbol or hashtag, uh, folks can get connected with me just by searching for RX Mike. And I am really looking forward to connecting, continuing this dialogue, and uh, exploring this journey with all the pharmacy technicians out there. So the National Pharmacy Technician Association, the NPTA, you can also follow at NPTA on Twitter, for example. Um, there's so many platforms popping up. I've had um, debates with uh, several pharmacy professionals of late as to how to leverage um, different platforms and how I see ones that I'm favorite. I have a favorites and ones that I'm not using like I should. I can't get my head around Snapchat and, you know, the world of pharmacy, although uh, I understand the B2B side of things, but being able to reach patients, I guess you could do that. But I, I am so excited about this segment of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. We know, I know, Mike knows how important you are. I'm talking to you, pharmacy technician who's listening to this right now. We believe in you. That's why we're investing in this channel the Pharmacy Technician Podcast. This is your podcast. So I want you to submit ideas to Mike and I. I want you to reach out to us. Tell us uh, your your grumbles, your, your positive stories, things that you'd like to see change, um, uh, any controversial issues, anything that you can get to us so that this show can become part of your, um, your daily commute or your daily jog, or you're working out, or something to be able to consume a good audio blog about you, the pharmacy technician. I want to thank pharmacy technicians for the work that you do. You are underappreciated. I know that you are. I know how hard you work. I've seen it uh, firsthand. I want to congratulate well, what you've done for the pharmacy profession. And Mike, once again, thank you so much for deciding and committing to lead the Pharmacy Technician Podcast. And with that, I'm going to give you the last words because this is your podcast, buddy. All right. Here's what I would say. I'm going to ask the pharmacy technicians out there to make a commitment to be involved with this podcast series. And if you do, this is a promise I'm going to make to you. If you'll actively listen to this program and continue the dialogue afterwards on social media, I promise you that you're going to see your personal and professional self reach new levels in a very short period of time. You're going to have all the tips, the tricks, and the shortcuts that I've learned and that we're seeing emerge on a daily basis across this industry. You're going to be at the top of the chain 
and I look forward to having this journey with you. Thank you so much. You were listening to the very first launch episode of the Pharmacy Technician Podcast, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. We are stoked. We are thrilled. Thank you so much, Pharmacy Technicians. And with that, have a great day. We'll talk to you next time. If you enjoyed the Pharmacy Technicians Podcast, please share on all your social media networks and help us reach other pharmacy technicians. Please check out the NPTA by going to their website at pharmacytechnician.org.